Hi, YouTube. This is Patrick, and I'm going to. Um, I I hadn't put up like movie reviews in a while, uh, just because. Um, not that I wasn't watching that many movies, but I don't know. I, I I didn't really have time to put them up, and by the time I got around to it, it was kind of time to put up like a Dexter, or, like a Walking Dead review. So I just never really got around to it, basically. Um, so I've seen about, like, maybe, I don't know, eight or ten movies that are worth, I guess, talking about. Some of them that are still out, some that are probably either just finished coming out, and one that I've actually seen that comes out in December. Uh, what comes out this month, rather. Uh, so I'm gonna just do kind of quick little reviews of each of them, um, in order from what I thought was the worst to the best. Um, so, if this video gets long, I'll probably break it up into two or something like that, but, uh, we'll see. Alright, anyway. First one up, um, there's a movie called A Dangerous Method. It's a David Cronenberg uh, film with uh, Viggo Mortensen and Michael Fassbender and Keira Knightley. Um, I was re really looking forward to it, just for the fact that the subject matter and it being Cronenberg and, um, he and Mortensen have, you know... Uh, I mean, History of Violence is good, and I thought Eastern Promises was really good, so I was hoping this would be great. Um, and it's about kind of the relationship... Um, well, I thought it was going to be about the relationship of, uh, of Freud and Carl Jung, but um, it uh, the only thing good about the movie was really Keira Knightley, uh, which is surprising. I mean, Viggo Mortensen was alright in it. You know, he was just kind of there, but he was kind of wasted. Uh, not drunk wasted, he was wasted in the movie. And Michael Fassbender kind of represented the boring that the movie was, which is really surprising, because he had a, a great turn as uh, Magneto earlier this year, and uh, I really want to see his movie uh, Shame, that just like came out over here in New York. Um, but, uh, yeah, this one was a huge, huge disappointment. It was just a lot of people just like talking about things that weren't interesting, and it wasn't you know, there, there wasn't like a style to it, really, which I thought there was going to be, uh, considering it's Cronenberg. I know he hasn't really done his horror, you know, stuff in a while, but um, still, still, really, really, really disappointing. I'd give it a five. Um, yeah, big disappointment. Okay, moving on to the next one. Uh, next one was uh, J. Edgar, uh, the film about... Jerry Hoover starring Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, directed by Clint Eastwood. Uh, this was one of, my, one, of one, one of my more anticipated movies of the year. And um, to be honest, I think I've liked every DiCaprio movie since The Beach. Uh, but not anymore. Uh, this was another one that it has a great subject and chose to just tell a really uninteresting, like, you know, not even story. I wouldn't even know. I don't even, it wasn't even really a story. I mean, they showed some of his, like, early years. They showed, you know, him kind of starting at the FBI and kind of starting a relationship with his secretary. Not, um, not like a physical relationship, but just, like, you know, like, whatever bond that they have through their whole lives. Um, secretary played by Naomi, Naomi Watts. Um, but really, the only, like more focused part of the movie was the relationship of Edgar and uh, Clyde Tolson played by Army Hammer. Like, whenever they got away from that, the movie just felt all over the place. Um, and the stuff with Tolson and, 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 and Hoover, it was, it was good, it was well done, and the, of course they don't really know if Hoover was gay, so they couldn't officially go, you know, completely like, all the way in. Uh, but, uh, and that ended up being a problem with a lot of this stuff. They didn't have, like, complete facts, so it's kind of hearsay and just, um... Yeah. Uh, I will say that if it hadn't been for, like, DiCaprio, who almost, almost saves the movie, um... But doesn't quite. I mean, there would be stuff going on that just was completely uninteresting, or, you know, certain scenes or whatever, and I just wouldn't care. But he would be doing something interesting. And it, would, it was almost worth watching for him to the point where he is still probably going to get an Oscar nomination, um, even though the movie's not very good. Um, I mean, a good example in the mo is a moment in the movie he puts a dress on, which is supposed to be a nod to Hoover's uh, cross-dressing. But 
again, we don't know if that's real, and it's and they tried to get around it in a certain way of why he puts like a dress on in the movie, uh, but it just doesn't work. Uh, DiCaprio somehow almost makes it work. Um, yeah, it's just um, and the rest of the cast, Naomi Watts is wasted. Judy Dench was okay. Uh, I mean, Naomi Watts, she just like. Early on in the movie, it looks like she's gonna, you know, have a major role, and then she just kind of disappears for the rest of it. Um, the whole Lindbergh storyline was just kind of mediocre. Um, and Army Hammer, who was I thought was great in the Social Network, he was all right here, but when it came to like the bigger moments in the movie, he just like was not like up to snuff at all, um, which was really disappointing. Uh, and Eastwood's Eastwood's got a bad had a bad couple of films. For me, anyway. The last movie I think of his that I liked was uh, Letters from Iwo Jima. I didn't really love it, but I just liked it more than Flags of Our Fathers. His last really good movie for me was uh, Mystic River. Um, but still, yeah, I've debated if I'm giving this a 5 or a 6. It was a 6. I think I'm pushing it down to a 5. I really didn't like it. Um, yeah, I mean, look, it looks great. Um, Eastwood has a lot of talent. There's a lot of talent involved. Uh, but the script by Dustin Lance Black, you know just kind of all over the place and the editing was awful whoever edited the movie is just terrible terrible um so yeah really disappointing on that one sort of a downer so far yeah so 5 out of 10 for J. Edgar um then I saw a movie uh, Immortals directed by Tarsum Singh or he just goes by Tarsum which is pretentious or it's just being a douchebag, whatever. Uh, it was visually really, really, really cool and um, similar to like 300, um, except a little better. Uh, I'd give it a six. It was, you know, it was fun to look at. It passed the time, uh, but I probably really wouldn't recommend it. Um, the action in it was really, really over the top and bloody, and like for that alone, I'm giving it like almost a seven because that aspect of it was actually that that good. So you know what you're getting into when you're watching it. Um, if it feels like unfair, I'm like rating this higher than like J. Edgar. Um, they're two different kinds of movies. You go into Immortals expecting one thing, and you pretty much get it, you know. Whereas opposed to J. Edgar, you don't. It, my expectations were just completely, uh, I don't know, destroyed by the movie not being good. But anyway, Immortals, six out of ten, fun action movie. Um, if you get around to seeing it, you might enjoy it more than I did. So uh, yeah. Next, uh, Puss in Boots, animated movie with Antonio Banderas as a cat, uh, as the cat from the Shrek series. This was better than Shrek 3 and 2, uh, I'm sorry, 3 and 4, um, as a person that has two cats, the funniest things about the movie are the, like, cat moments pretty much in there, but, uh, it was good. It was a lot better than, you know, a typical spin-off, uh, Zach Galifianakis' Humpty Dumpty is just a really weird character. Uh, which you normally don't see in movies like this. Um, yeah, it was good. It was a lot of fun. I thought Kung Fu Panda 2 is better uh, this year, and um, there's another animated film that I saw that I'll get to uh, that uh, I thought was better. But uh, Puss, out of Bo Puss, uh, Puss in Boots, uh, 7 out of 10. Uh, solid movie. Funny. Solid. Uh, next was Moneyball with Brad Pitt. Uh, he plays Billy Bean, the general manager of the Oakland A's, and he has to he had to kind of compete with you know other teams. So they devise this new way of using percentages of on base percentage players, and him and Jonah Hill, uh, you know, get together to build up the Oakland A's and have them compete. Uh, really well done movie. Brad Pitt was awesome. Jonah Hill was really, really good. Casted against, like, type at the time. Um, but if anyone knows baseball and anyone knows, you know, any kind of history as far as the Oakland A's go, they know the exact problem with this movie is that, yeah, the A's went on a 20-game, like, winning streak that year that the movie takes place in. Uh, but they didn't win the World Series, so where's your big dramatic, like, conclusion? It's a movie. You need the, you know... Uh, so I'm, I give it a seven. It was a it was a good movie. I mean, uh, the script, Aaron Sorkin uh, helped out on the script. He just did the Social Network last year, so the script is really witty. Again, it's worth seeing for almost just like Brad Pitt's performance. Um, and if you're into baseball and stuff like that, but 
the, the biggest problem with this movie is something that you would know going into it. If anyone was looking forward to this movie, you know, for the subject matter, you would already probably know what the potential problem would be, and that's exactly what it is. It does not have the big dramatic like conclusion that it could. Um, so that really takes away from it. I was thinking about it the whole movie, and then I was thinking, how are they going to end this? How are they going to end this? And then they just kind of, you know, went the way I was worried about. Uh, but still, really, really good. 7 out of 10. Uh, I, I do recommend it. Um, if you're a fan of that subject, I recommend it. Uh, even if you're not, you might find stuff in it to really like um, and just think it's like a decent, you know, two hours. Uh, next. What was next? Uh, now we get into the better stuff. 50-50 uh, with Joseph gordon Levett and Seth Rogen, uh, where Levett's character has uh, spinal cancer, uh, based on a true story. Um, I was really looking forward to seeing this. Um, also has uh, Anna Kendrick and Bryce Dallas Howard. Uh, the movie, uh, computer shut off. The movie. Um, I figured it was gonna be split down the middle of like funny and like sad, but uh, kind of like a Judd Apatow comedy. But it was more uh, sad than funny. It was more dramatic than I thought it was, and it took a really, really like strong look at at cancer and and um, it was re and Levette was really, really good in it. Um, and Rogan basically plays himself, uh, but there's a little bit something extra there somehow. Uh, it's hard to explain. You know, he he's got all, he's got a lot of talent besides the 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 you know the laugh and all the the improv stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I really liked Anna Kendrick too, who really just has played you know for the most part an uppity you know not bitch but just like an uppity kind of whatever uh, and stuff like Up in the Air. Um, and even Twilight, the first two, the only two I saw, so that's... forget about that. Um, but, you know, she was really great. Every time we saw her in the movie, it was like a fresh of, uh, a, fresh, a breath of fresh air. Um, you know, for a character that's really going through a lot of problems. Um, I'd give it an eight. Um, I was hoping I'd like it more, but, um, it would probably... I'd probably rank it, like, maybe around, like, fifth among, like, my favorite movies this year. Um, and maybe, like, sixth or something like that. But uh, it was still really good. Again, there are people out there that might enjoy it even more than I did and might absolutely love it. I, I, I would really uh, say check it out. Um, really, really good movie. Next was the movie that I'm going to do a really, really quick review for it now because I'll do another one when the movie comes out in a couple of weeks, which is The Adventures of Tintin. Uh, I'll just say that I gave it, I'll give it an 8. It was my favorite animated movie that came out this year. It was a great bounce back for Spielberg after Crystal Skull. Um, and it has me really looking forward to War Horse even more. Um, I'll just leave it at that for that one. 8 out of 10 for Tintin. That I'll put another review up when I see it uh, again. Uh, and last, this is the last one. This was my favorite movie that I've seen in the past couple of months. It was called Ides of March with Ryan Gosling and George Clooney. I hate politics, detest politics, and this movie uh, felt like a big, like, someone, like, patting me on my back, basically. Like, this is, you know, you're right to hate politics, because this is what it is. Um, absolutely fantastic, fantastic movie. Compl I, had, I didn't have, like, great expectations going in. I heard it was good. Um, you know, really well done, but nothing, you know, nothing spectacular. I thought it was awesome. Um... If you're like me, where you just you, you can't like stomach listening to any politician about anything because you know it's all bullshit, basically, then you'll love this. You will absolutely love this. Um, uh, Ryan Gosling, who had a really really good year with uh, Crazy Stupid Love and uh, Drive, although I'm not really a big fan of Drive. You can check out my Drive review if you want. Um, but he was he, the problem. My problems with that movie was not with him. Uh, and he was fantastic in, in this, Ides of March. George Clooney was great. Um, pretty much everyone. Philip Seymour Hoffman, Paul Giamatti, Evan Rachel Wood, all fantastic. Clooney, I think, is getting better as a director, um, which isn't surprising. Um, this was like this is like my big recommendation for someone to find and watch. Ides of March. Um, it probably would go to like my second, mo second favorite movie of the year behind Warrior. It's still Warrior. It's still number one for me. Um... 
uh, which again I really would stress go see that or when it comes out on Blu-ray or DVD in like a couple of weeks you gotta watch it with Tom Hardy and Joel Edgerton, Joel Edgerton. um all right, this video is long enough at 15 minutes. Um, all right, guys, so those are my recommendations. A quick recap. 5 out of 10 for A Dangerous Method and J. Edgar. 6 out of 10 for Immortals. 7 out of 10 for Puss in Boots and Moneyball. 8 out of 10 for 50-50 and uh, Adventures of Tintin. And 9 out of 10 for Ides of March. All right, I'll be back with... Um, I'm going to get around to seeing the the Muppets. I want to see Hugo. I want to see the Descendants and the Artist, that silent movie. Uh, so I can get around to seeing those. I'll put stuff up on that. Um, plus Mission Impossible coming out uh, along with War Horse and the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and everything like that. So uh, I hope to do some more of these and not as a big bulk like this one. All right, guys. Take care.